In this video, we're going to see how to make a button do something in Android Q with Kotlin. Let me show you what we have set up so far that we've done in some previous videos. First of all, we have an image button, which is called BTN Save. And we also have a DTO called Plant. We're going to make a new DTO called Specimen. And that Specimen DTO, or Data Transfer Object, Plain Old Java Object, Plain Old Kotlin Object, whatever you want to call it, it can go by any of those. But in any case, that DTO will store the data that we have on the screen. Now, eventually we're going to push this up to a cloud database. We're going to push it up to Firebase. So let's go ahead and make a new branch and we'll call, we'll call it Save to Cloud. As you can see at the lower right, the new branch is now created. Let's go to the main fragment that's behind this look and feel. And this is a fragment that was created when I started the project, but I've been building it up over a series of videos. Now, if we look at the lifecycle method on activity created. This is where we can do things like wire up button click listeners. One other thing that I will point out is that I have already imported the synthetic imports. And what that means is that we can have direct access to any of these widgets on the fragment. We don't have to do something like find view by ID, which we used to have to do. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Just know it's a little bit easier now than it used to be. So let's go ahead and access that button. Let's see, it's called BTN save. So go to the fragment and let's say BTN save dot set on click listener and gives us the open and close curly. Now we don't want to do too much work in this on activity created function. So let's go ahead and invoke something called save specimen. And of course this doesn't exist. So we'll say create function. We want to start grabbing some content off of this screen and we want to put it into a, an object. If I take a look at our DTO, we see we have plant. And I want to make a difference between a plant and a specimen. So a plant, and this is just my definition, but a plant is the scientific definition of a plant. A genus, species, cultivar, and other characteristics like where it's native, is it edible, does it have edible parts, does it like full sun, so on and so forth. A specimen is a specific plant that you can touch. So it's kind of like a one-to-many relationship where a plant is on the one side and a specimen is on the many side. If we take a look at the user interface we've built so far, we see that the plant is what we select in the autocomplete here, but then the specimen has things like latitude, longitude, description, date planted, so on and so forth. These specimen fields are what we want to collect. So let's go to our DTO and we'll say new Kotlin file or class. And we'll call this one class and we'll say specimen. Now add and we'll say data class. So it's kind of like a DTO. And then let's go ahead and define some attributes here in the constructor signature. So var plant name uh, string var latitude string. Uh, you could make an argument for that to be a different data type. Uh, I kind of like strings unless I'm doing math on these because of floating point arithmetic. Var longitude string, var description, string, var date planted, string, var specimen ID, int, let's say equals zero. We'll go ahead and give that a default. Var plant ID equals zero. We'll give that one a default as well. We'll call that type int. At this point, we have our DTO. Let's go back now to our fragment and our save specimen. And let's create a specimen object. So we'll save our specimen uh, equals specimen. Now you notice that it has a red line here and it's telling me that I need to pass in a few required fields. So a couple things that I can do. I can either pass in all the values in the constructor, but since I'm getting them from the screen, that will get a little bit messy and a lot of symbols. Another option is I can make an alternate constructor uh, for the specimen, and then I can use one of our scope functions to populate everything. Or the other option is I can simply give everything a default. And when I give everything a default value, that means that they're all optional and I can fill them in later. So different reasons to do it different ways. I'm going to go ahead and give all the strings the, a default. I know I've already given the numbers a default. Now we go back to main fragment and you see that it now compiles. Now that we have an object, we could populate the attributes the old school Java way by invoking setter methods or even by accessing those attributes directly and assigning them. Or we could pass them in the constructor. But there's one other thing that we can do with Kotlin and that is use our scope functions once again. I don't want to have to type an object reference each time, so I prefer one that uses this 
And I would like something that's an extension function so I don't have to pass an object in. So apply looks like the best bet right now. Back to our editor. On our object, I'm going to say dot apply. Open curly, close curly. And now we can refer to all of those attributes directly. I can say latitude, see that? And then we'll say LBL latitude value. If you remember, that's where the latitude appears on the screen. Dot text, and then let's give it a two string. Longitude, and once again, remember this is in the this is longitude that belongs to the specimen object we've declared up above. We're referring to that implicitly because we're in this scoped function. So longitude equals LBL longitude. Uh oh, maybe we don't have an LBL longitude. No problem. Let's go back and find our fragment, and this will actually help me kind of show you what we're doing here. So I click on this guy, and it is called text view five. Let's call it LBL longitude value just like so, and come back here, LBL longitude value, and you see it actually updated very quickly. Text.toString, and then we can say plant name equals ACT plant name dot text dot two string. We'll do description equals TXT description dot text dot two string. And once again, these are all things that I put on our fragment in an earlier video. So the plant name is here, the description is here. Uh, we also have date planted, which we'll handle in just a moment. Date planted equals txt date planted dot text dot two string. We're gonna add a to do here, save this object. We're not gonna worry about save this object in this video, but let's go ahead and set a breakpoint and let's run this in the debugger and make sure that our button click is working. The emulator is loaded now, and you see that I have a latitude and longitude. So let's pop populate the rest of the uh, fields. Let's say Eastern Redbud. Note that auto completes from a previous JSON source. We'll say Spring Bloom. And let's go ahead and give it a date planet of 02, 02, 2020. And now let's choose Save and watch what happens. So we see our breakpoint hits. We choose F8, and we see we're creating a specimen object. Now let's walk through each of these one at a time. We see, we see latitude, 39.14, which sounds about right. Longitude is minus 84.50, which is, sounds about right. That's uh, around UC's campus. Plant name, are we able to grab that? Eastern Redbud. Description, Spring Bloom. Now we continue to the end of this block. Take a look up above. You can see that I can either mouse over specimen or we can look to the right. And note that the specimen object is now populated with plant name Eastern Redbud, latitude 39.14, longitude 84.50, description, date planted, so on and so forth. So in this video, we've seen how to generate a button click in Kotlin and populate an object. I hope this video has been useful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.